applying quadratics to revenue or cash money is a really weird concept. So we're going to go through this one and see how it works out. Now think about the revenue of a company is defined by the amount of money the company earns from selling a product at a given price. So revenue is the number of items they sell times how much it costs for each item. And that's how much money they make. So, sports store, sportswear store sells baseball hats. Last year, the, swords, the store sold 600 hats at $14 each. So if we think about last year, 600 hats times $14 each gives us a total cash money of $8,400. Store manager is planning to increase the price. So from $14, it's going to go up. Customer survey shows that for every $2 the price goes up, there will be a drop in 40 sales. So every time that goes up $2, we're going to lose 40. So one situation is 660 or 560 times 16, which is going to be $8,000. $960, which still means that the company made more money. Since I'm pretty greedy, if I was the owner of this store, I would want to try and make the most money possible. So how many times can I increase the price and still sell enough that I make the most money possible? And every one of these combinations will be a parabola. So as we increase the price, our total cash goes up. Increase the price again, it goes up. Increase the price again, it goes up. And then all of a sudden when we increase it too much, we've lost too many customers and it starts to come down. And that relation is not linear, but guess what? It's a parabola. So at some point, if we increase it 20, 30 times, this is gonna cost so much that no one's gonna buy it. So we're looking for that sweet spot. How many times can we increase it to get our vertex, the highest cash possible? And that's how it's related to quadratics. So here, we're gonna set it up a bit different. Let statements are gonna help us set it up. So we're gonna let X represent the number of price changes. And in this particular situation, that's how many times we should increase it by $2. Because we're setting up a quadratic, our next let statement is let Y represent the revenue. Or how much cash we can make. So we're gonna set up a table to think about this because it's going to help us actually create an equation to work from. So if we think about the OG, the original setup for price, it was $14. And the original setup for the number that we sold was 600. Instead of going through plus two dollars take away 40, plus two dollars take away 40, plus two dollars take away 40, and looking at it that way, we can set up an equation. If it's only one change or two change, we might be able to see that. If it was 40, 50, a thousand, because we're dealing with a high price item, we don't want to go through every combination. We want to use our math to do it quickly. So we want to know after changes, so each change we make is going to add $2. So for each change, X, we're going to add $2. And each time we change it, we're going to lose minus 40 customers. That is one bracket, and that is the other, because that is the 
price per item, and that is the number sold. Original with the change. So now we have the equation. So step three, we have an equation. Y equals the number of items times the price per item. From there, we're going to get it in standard form. To do that again, we're going to FOIL. 600 times 14. 600 plus 2x minus 40 times 14 and negative 40 plus 2x. I'm going to collect the like terms. I'm also going to put my x squared term first. take away 560 so I've got it in standard form that's my y-intercept that makes sense that was my starting combination now that I have it in standard form I'm going to complete the square complete the square to find vertex form. So again, I'm going to factor out negative 80 so I'm going to x squared minus 8x and that 8400 makes space. Remember to complete the square. I'm now going to say ooh, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4 and all of that squared is 16. I'm going to need to distribute negative 80 times negative 16 to get it out of the brackets. Get out of the party. The negative 80 is still in front. It's part of the equation. Negative 80 times negative 16 gives me positive 1280. I still have my 8400 go back. Collect my like terms. Factor my perfect square trinomial. Remember that all that becomes x minus 4, that same minus 4 that we had there, all squared. And when we add that together, so that tells us, and what does that tell us? Why do we do that? Great question. That tells us the vertex. In our vertex, from there is 4, 9, 6, 8, 0. So that point right there is 4, 9, 6, 8, 0. That 4 is not how much they should charge, but remember that's what x is. That's how many price changes. So what should be the selling price? Well, if we go back up here, we said the price is going to be 14 plus 2x. And if we know x is 4, then we can sub that in. So that's from right up there. So our new price to maximize the revenue, revenue is going to be 14 plus 2 times 4. So 
three for to sell the hats for twenty two bucks. How many baseball hats did the store sell? Well again, if we go up to the number sold. We started with 600, and we're gonna take away 40 times X. So we can take our X of four, sub it in. So we know that they would sell 440. The revenue, or how much cash they're gonna make, is how many they sold times what's the price. So the revenue is gonna be 22 times 440. Which when you type that in, 9,680. Wait a minute. We've already seen that number. There it is, right there. So by putting in a vertex form, we can get the max revenue. Now completing the square seems like a little bit extra work. So I'm gonna do the next example a different way. But just think about it, and the main thing when you see revenue questions, let statements where X is the number of price changes or the number of times we're going to change the price. If we looked at this and continue, let's take away 40. And I'm just going to do that here in, let's do it in red. So if we just continue this, take away 40, we have 520 times 18. Still went up, made more money. We increase it to twenty dollars. We lose another forty. No, well, we still went up, made more cash. If we increase it to twenty-two, we lose forty. We know that that is. If we increase it another two, we lose forty. And all of a sudden, it starts to come back down. If I continued just for giggles, whoa, look at that. So we have our vertex. It won't always be one, two, three, four through. Four changes, original, one change, two change, three change, four change. So this is not demonstrating any of our skills, where this is something that you might remember or have thought how you can solve it right away, demonstrates our skills.